How do you plan to, to save for a large expense like a new car in retirement? Okay, so a new car. So now, yeah, we put those in the plan uh, as separate uh, units. We ask the clients, you know, roughly how often they want to replace them. Seems like between seven and 15 years yeah, is the so range. Yeah, so we're in that range. Yeah, 10 we, kind of a common sweet 10, spot. 10 a lot. So let's, let's, let's say it's 10 years. Then we ask the client, you know, what kind of car they would want to buy and how much, how much do they expect to spend, you know, after they've traded in their other car, you know, what's the net outflow to get this new car? And so uh, let's say it's 10 years. And the question is basically, you know, should we be saving for that? And where should we be saving for that? Yeah. Right. Um, yeah, I think it's a great idea. And I do have a lot of clients that do that. They're really good about, I mean, our clients have money because they're really good with their money. I mean, they just are. And so they, you know, they start to think about, okay, I'm going to, I need 50 or 60,000 or, you know, whatever it is uh, in 10 years, that's X amount per month. And they start to put that away and kind of save that up. Uh, yeah. You, you rather not take it from a retirement account, like a IRA or a 401k, because it's going to be a massive income hit. And yeah. It's going to be a very big taxable event, if it, depending on the size of the need. Yeah. Especially, you know, taking it all out at once <laughs> to buy that car. Uh, you know, uh, spreading it out at least would help some in terms yeah. of keeping you down in a lower tax bracket. But most of the times I have clients that, you know, they have their overall income coming in and they're parsing off some of that instead of spending it, they're just saving for that next car, you yeah. know, cause they know they're going to need it and what have you and that kind of thing. So, you know, where you put it, well, you can put it in the bank, right. And, yeah. and you can put it in CDs and those types of things. And that's becoming a much more viable option. Yeah. Uh, you can have 5% for a CD. Yeah. You're getting 5% now. Now you are talking about 10 years. If you look at the dot plot for the federal reserve, they're actually expecting in the, the, the fed funds rate to come down from five and a half. I think 2026, they had it down into like the two and a half, three percent yeah. range. So if you're going to do CDs, you know, you might not be making five over the that entire time of that 10 years. Now, uh, and I'll share, I'll share this with you because this is, we talked about this a little bit last week, but this is kind of a cool chart. This just shows the stock market rates of return. So the kind of the extremes, the best one year, and this is over the last 30 years, right? Yeah. So it doesn't go back forever, but 30 years is not bad. Best and worst one year, two years, five years, seven years. You get down to that 10 year range or even the five year range. I think five years is kind of a sweet spot. And I've always kind of said that if you're going to invest in the stock market, you know, five years is a pretty good outlook. Uh, yeah. Mainly because the worst five year period is a lot less than the best five year period, right? Uh, and so uh, that, that to me makes some sense. So maybe you, as an option, you could take the money that you were saving towards your car for a 10 year period and start to put that into something like the S&P 500, you know, mm -hmm. ETF. Yeah. Vanguard has a really nice one, uh, ticker symbols VOO, for example. And you would just put in your monthly money into that. You can probably set it up automated so it comes out of your checking account. Yeah. And so 200, 300, whatever it is a month is going into that. Um, and because you'll, over a longer period of time, you should make more money than the banks. No, no guarantees. Yeah. yeah. I mean, there there's a 10-year period out there that happened once where it didn't make money. So it doesn't always work, uh, but I'd certainly consider it. Uh, and especially because you're dollar cost averaging, very powerful concept. When you're putting money in every month and the market drops, you know, that's not terrible because then when it comes back, you made money on that, yep. you know, as far as that goes. I probably ratchet that back on the risk as I got closer to my end of my 10 year period. You know, I get into that seventh or eighth year, I might start taking some off the table. Yeah. You, you probably want to move most of that into cash at, right. this, at a certain point where. You yep. Yeah, you don't want right before you're supposed to buy your car, a big market crash to take out a bunch of your money for and the car savings. The, yeah, And then you have to buy a cheaper car. Yeah, so anyway, you know, it is a good idea uh, for these major expenses that you know you're going to have to start to, you know, put money aside. A lot of my clients do that. I think it's really, really smart. Uh, you know, they don't like to borrow money and they want to pay cash. Uh, and so, you know, they've got that set up by the time it gets there. I don't think it's a terrible idea to have kind of a stock type savings account for that, where you're just kind of plunking money in, you know, the stock market averages uh, roughly 11% a year, you know, over the long term. Um, so, you know, 
try to capture some of that with mm -hmm. your savings. And it just means if it works, you know, if you needed 60,000, maybe you only have to put in 50,000 yeah. because the other 10 came from growth uh, and helped make the market help you pay for your car. Uh, got to do it right. Got to do it intelligently. Probably need to liquidate some of it before the end of the 10 year period mm -hmm. uh, just to protect that principle. But it's worth a, it's worth a, something to look at in my opinion.